problems stem from the way humans interact with uh, the ecosystem. Nowadays, solutions are usually developed in silos. So that means that when, whenever, for example, you you'd solve actually a quite a big problem, let's say that you would solve hunger issues in a, a specific country, does that mean you solve it in a different country as well? Well, maybe not, because maybe different climates actually need different solutions. So for me, it's all about, you know, doing away with day-to-day -day challenges, doing away with the fact that, you know, I need to go to a job to kind of take care of my electricity bills. Or, you know, we need to believe in some crazy ideas for that to happen. If you have um, a, a way where you can integrate these different systems together, and that they can borrow information and knowledge from each other and expertise from each other, then that is where you can maybe use the learnings and systems and technology developed for country A, also for country B. And it is currently what is not being done. Because right now, uh, for very complex problems, you rarely have uh, one single piece of software that does all the work. Gathering the information, processing the information, training models, and then executing upon those models. I think this is the first step in having a system where software can actually understand what other software does. I'd like to look at it as it being the soil uh, within nature, so where everything can grow. We are basically uh, building a language for machines to understand how to interact with these tools so that the machines can make these choices for people and can use these tools for the people. For you to create benevolent AGI, you need to have the some level of human knowledge, so to speak, right? So people from arts, ethics. We somehow to break this notion that this is a very technical area. We are inviting everyone that would like to contribute to thinking about how you can create this integrative system uh, to contribute their thoughts and to contribute their ideas. So the call to action would be to anybody that has an interest in uh, logic, formal logic or linguistics uh, or semantics. Uh. So we can create different solutions for different problems, but as long as they're not integrated with each other, then we didn't create an ecosystem. The tie-in that I see with the Nature 2.0 track is that we are trying to think about a post-scarcity society. That can solve like a lot of problems because it gives this, this space to experiment. So it is, it's remarkable to uh, kind of see that there are more people, more influential people thinking along the same lines. Within the Singularity Net spirit, of course, what we're developing, and also for the H2O no spirit, of course, what we're developing is, is open source. So it will be available via GitHub. You know, the way Jan Peter kind of talked about it, the one phrase that he mentioned stayed with me. He says that once you're able to break the shackles of your current thinking process, which is so conditioned, right, then abundance, you just start seeing abundance everywhere. Trying to solve these problems uh, in a way that is different from the way that you are trained to think. That's the right way to be thinking about it in terms of, you know, getting to the end state of a problem-free world.